What is up, players? It's Warboss Tamp and it's Mug. Welcome to Mongol Mondays, where we're taking a look at the figures that we unboxed on Firestorm Fridays, and I'm showing them to you all painted up. And here we have our first models in the series from Fireforge Games. These are the heavy cavalry archers, the Mongol heavy cavalry archers. And you might remember that when I unboxed them on Friday, I wasn't really sure why there were two bows per figure and why there were two quivers per figure. There was the one that is modeled onto the actual models and there is there were extra ones. So I decided to glue them on anyways and just hopefully figure out why later. And after doing some research, I found out that the reason why there are two bows and two quivers per figure is because the Mongol warriors at the time had a main weapon which was the compound bow. It had a pull of 166 pounds, considerably more than an English longbow, and had a destructive range of 200 to 300 yards. And these were the uh, heavy bows that they would use for long, long range, long distance stuff. They uh, perhaps had one longbow and one short bow, and two or three quivers holding 30 arrows each. And it says here, in this uh, Osprey Men at Arms series book that I'm reading called The Mongols. It says that uh, there were two kinds of arrows that they had, light ones with small sharp points, which they use for long range shooting, and heavy arrows with large broad heads for close quarters. The heads were sharp, uh, hardened by heating them until they were red hot and then dipped into salt water, a treatment which made them hard enough to pierce armor. So that is awesome. And that is why they have two sets of quivers and two bows, one for long range and one for short range stuff. And I love that. That's great. It, um, I, one of the things that I love about figures and miniatures and painting is the fluff and the um, the, the reason behind the modeling and uh, the sculpting and things like that, the real world reasons why some things are sculpted onto the model, that really makes me happy. I also read in this book, it's so great, these Osprey books are just fantastic. It talks about the kind of gear that these guys would have, how the, the armor was made and um, what constitutes the armor, like even down to things like what their clothes are, how they used to dress and the, the kinds of rations they used to have. And there's this great um, section in the book that talks about how they would have, um, I guess they would have this really hard meat and so they'd, they'd stuff it under their saddles while they rode all day. The, the meat would get tenderized and um, by the time they rode for camp, it'd be, it'd be pretty good. So I highly suggest doing your research if you're getting into historical war gaming. It is fun. It is cool. I, I didn't know anything about the Mongol armies except they were just like hordes of horsemen that, that rode down everyone that uh, stood against them and were particularly brutal. So uh, learning about the models and learning about the history makes it much more fun to paint them up. Speaking of painting, I had a lot of fun painting these guys because they're very, very simple uh, comparatively because everything is very, very much explained on the model. There's nothing that really needs um, explaining. So. Uh, the armor was just Lead Belcher from Games Workshop, and then I, I highlighted with some silver from Vallejo's Liquid Gold series, or I guess Liquid Metallic series, and then I just added a bunch of different colors onto the models because I did, I did a Google image search, Mongol Warrior, and I found lots of great things like purple, reds, blues, greens, so I decided that um, for these guys, because Fireforge Games also has a a light cavalry kit where they're they're not armored and they're they're meant to be more mobile it's a plastic kit it looks really really great for these guys i decided to make them i guess either nobility or sons of nobles or just more rich and ostentatious and having a higher rank than the other guys in the horde so i did that by showcasing some nice colors purples and blues and greens and making the colors brighter like the reins on all the horses are a nice bright red um I, I tried to make the clothes as, as nice and decorative as possible. And the bows, I wanted to make them look nice by doing some wood grain effects and just making them a little bit lighter than, um, than you know, a regular shaded wood color would be. So I had a lot of fun painting these guys. And as you can see, I put two of them on this larger base and two on individual ones. And um, I had a great time painting them so hey if you were interested and if this 
video made you interested in looking at these models, I highly suggest you check out Fireforge Games website. And you can get there by going to fireforge-games.com. The game system is called Deus Vault. And uh, you can get to Fireforge Games website and check out all their products. They have a bunch of different armies already on sale and a bunch of really cool looking ones in the works. So I highly support historical wargaming and, um, and uh, companies that are, that are trying to do really interesting things like this. So the last thing I want to do is show you a size comparison to some Games Workshop stuff. I have here a... Well, what did we say this was? House Stark Bowman, Bretonian Bowman, and Empire Trooper, and sadly an unpainted gray or green knight. Well, he'll be a gray knight for now because uh, he is not painted, and because um, all of my other cavalry stuff is back in Hawaii. So let's take a look at how big they are straight on, shall we? Infantry figures there, and then here's the Fireforge Cavalry, and the Games Workshop Knight figure. So they look, I remember saying this when I reviewed the Fireforge uh, Teutonic Knights. They're not as beefy as, as Games Workshop stuff, especially their cavalry, where the cavalry is concerned. And um, the horses are more of a realistic scale than the, the Warhammer horses look very very big and very chunky so they they do not look that big and let's see if we can line them front to back and especially yeah if you could take a look at the 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 head section of the green knight is a lot bigger than the uh heads and the necks of uh the um, fireforge models look at especially the head it's very very small and realistic compared to this very huge and I don't want to say cartoony, but just the bigger proportions. The riders also, um, even in these heavy armor, or the heavy armor that the Mongol uh, heavy cavalry had, the model still looks not as big and beefy as these guys. Although the Warhammer stuff, uh, especially Bretonians, are wearing plate armor. So yeah, there you go. There's a little size comparison for you. And... We'll cap it off there. I hope you are interested in these videos. I do have a couple more uh, sets of Mongol resin figures to go through for Fireforge games. So um, let's line them up. Let's line them up. Let's line them up. So yeah, thank you for watching. Check, like I said, check out Fireforge games if you're interested in their products and in taking a look at their uh, Deus Vault game and uh, the range of other figures that they have. And uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any uh, Fireforge models or if you've played or heard of De the Deus Vault game, I'd love to get some feedback from you guys. So, let me put the other two guys back on. There we go. A lot of fun to paint and really characterful pieces. I had a great time painting them. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Laters!